I will do just that, John Barmore. Yay, welcome to Fireside Chat with John for the Old World, episode two. Episode two, two. excited. Two, two, two. We have a, a layout now that John cannot see because he just sees my lovely face and I just see his lovely face in the recording. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, actually, it's funny because the reason I called it the fireside chat is because you were doing it in front of your fireplace. Yes, still there. It's still there. I hope. I hope. I hope. If I turn around, it's still there. It's yes. I, because I can see it. If, if none of us were looking at it, it disappears. That's how like load times in the uh, uh, this this what's it called the where it's not real matrix. Uh, I think, thing. like yeah. Well, I'm thinking like pop ins like in video games or the, the draw yes. distance. It doesn't connect to it and draw it in. I mean, do you ever wonder why you have to like? sealed past your hallway before it loads in the fireplace like it's always mm -hmm. but as lovely as that fireplace is because it's some wonderful artwork and you my lovely human being are in front of it for the folks at home since it's going to be fireside chat i went out perused the internet five minutes before we started here mm -hmm. and found boom a nice little dwarf fireplace this shall be oh. our hearth this shall be where we gather the chat old world uh and this will also be the side where if we have to put images up we will but yeah, John, episode two um, at this impromptu podcasting type thing because it's we're doing it when we feel like it. There's not going to be a set schedule to this. That's probably the best way to do it <laughs> with our yeah. busy schedules. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't... Um, well, I, I don't know about you. I, I'm, I guess, very lucky at this point that I've actually received my pre-order stuff. Mm -hmm. There's, of course, been some shipping issues in uh, United States, Canada, with yep. uh, a lot of the winter weather that we had around Memphis shut down shipping for a while. A lot of orders got delayed. Of course, like the entire main release of the old world got delayed, yeah. and they've been slowly trickling out and getting to people. I did receive mine, so I'm very excited. Uh, it was there Friday night, so. That's great. Uh, I am due to receive my. It's time of recording, uh, and everybody, John, John were, uh, and I are recording this uh the weekend prior to when you'll see this coming out because i'll be away for work mm -hmm. for a whole week i'll be down in dallas i'm gonna hit up the warhammer citadel and then do the the work stuff um but be sure be sure and get one of those crazy warhammer themed coffees when you're in there or oh i will i will maybe the slanesh drink just for you i love that slanesh drink yeah <laughs> that's pink pink coffee who who wouldn't want it right i want a marathi <laughs> mocha but you know mm. they haven't made it yet Get one of each. You got plenty of time for all that caffeine. Right? Mm -hmm. But tomorrow, uh, as I venture down to Dallas for for work for a week, my old world order will be arriving. <laughs> it will be waiting for you when you get home. There's just yes. all the anticipation while you're gone. I'm sure you won't think about it at all while you're trying to do work. <laughs> oh, not at all. I, I have not spent the past, you know, two weeks, three weeks of work, however long it's been, consuming as much old world content and creating as much old world content as possible. I'm just clear. obsessing and list building and thinking everything you'll do when you get your stuff. And yep. then here it comes the day when you leave. Yep. I am clearly capable of paying attention to CFOs and CEOs telling me what the next year is going to be like and quotas and blah, 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 blah. When I'm just like, what if I took Sword Masters as an anvil and a hammer? Ooh. Do I want one unit of dragon princes? Or <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I am debating that right now. Um, uh -huh. Or do I want one big one? I don't know. Um, Yes, I'm excited. Mine will be here, and I'll get to have the enjoyment that I've been living through you with my release arriving. So I'm looking forward to it. Also, I may have bought uh, a new high elf army. <laughs> new one? Like, from scratch? Like, yes. unpainted, unassembled? Kind uh, of? Unpainted. It, it is mostly okay. assembled. Um, good friend Tom Lyons, if you ever watch Warhammer Weekly, has a mm -hmm. boatload. And he's, uh, nice, nice. before he gets them up on eBay, he, he knew I was interested, so he messaged me, gave me a great deal. I bought like 2400 points and i'm doing it in a very narrative fashion which we could talk about here in a little bit when we get to yeah, our hobby absolutely but, yeah. um that's also arriving tomorrow <laughs> wow <laughs> yes yes um but i did go out uh and pick up the tomb kings box myself because i couldn't resist it on the launch day the warhammer store had it so i do have a and book. i remember your little reveal video where you had it underneath the snow and you yeah. did it all fancy where you wiped the snow off and revealed the box that was mm -hmm. nice that was nice. It was good. It was good. But yes, um, we could talk. I mean, this is going to be a rambling show anyway. Uh, but John, before I keep talking about all my stuff and my thoughts, and <sighs> give me yours. <laughs> I mean, it's clearly it's Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras season for you. Thank you very much. How much coming up on the? Uh, how much? Uh, how much? Yeah. Uh, 
I told myself this year I wouldn't buy a king cake for the house because I'll just end up eating it all myself, and that's not healthy. Yes. Um, so I'll just survive on whatever shows up to work. Just, you know, hey, I'll have a slice. Um, yep. <laughs> on on Wednesday, the last day I was in the office, I worked from home the end of the week. On Wednesday, I think we had four king cakes in the office. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, you know what? You know, <laughs> Keep talking. Hold on a second. I'm going to do something here. All right. And, and the nice thing is locally, all the different bakeries, they all have a slightly different way of doing it. There's a whole bit of family drama where one family split and the recipe went every different direction. So when everybody brings in their king cake that they bring in, they're all slightly different. So there's a little, you know, whose favorite is it and which one do you like and which mm -hmm. one have you never tried before? Which so, one's the real baby? Uh, exactly. Oh, that's, that's the fun part is, I mean, in theory, yeah. when you get the baby, when you cut the slice, if you get the baby, that means you buy the next king cake. So, but therefore, when people bring lots in, that starts to perpetuate more and more and more. Mm. By the time we get to the end of the season, yeah, there's usually like five or six king cakes in there. 32 king it's cakes. It's hard not to eat for breakfast and lunch and a snack. And it's like, no, no, I, no, that's, that's like 5,000 calories. I yeah. can't do that. The, uh, <laughs> well, a couple of years ago, uh, you're very generous. That's where these beads are from. They sit on my hobby desk always to think oh. of you. Um, oh, nice. But yeah, you, you sent a, tr a true king cake up to me and my wife. Uh, I would not, she ate probably a third of it. I ate two things of it. <laughs> it, mm -hmm. it was delicious. And like every time I, I always forget. And if I wasn't gone this week, I would probably actually order one now, but it's probably one. It's probably a little late and two. Uh, it's never too late. They sell them. Mardi Gras season is from January 6th, which is 12th night mm -hmm. all the way until fat Tuesday, Mardi Gras itself, which this year hey, what, is, what is it this the year? 13th of February. Oh, so it's right before Valentine's Day. You know what? So you have, that's that's Mardi Gras season. So you got plenty of time. You know what? <laughs> then what I will do is uh, I will grab the link from you. One, I'll put it in the show notes just for fun. And two, Absolutely. I will buy one maybe like Monday or Tuesday when I'm down there and just have it shipped up. So Ooh. it should arrive when I get home. So I have King Cake, High Elves, and Old World. To be, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm clearly going to pay attention to work. <laughs> then you can take the King Cake baby out and somehow work it into the army. There's a little objective marker. I'm just going to put a, put a high elf into the... Uh, oh, just just stick a high elf in the King Cake, yeah. see who gets the high elf. Right? <laughs> <laughs> who gets the sword master? You have to start a new army. Oh, it's me. Let's, let's give me some ideas for the next one I take into work. Maybe I'll like hide a Bretonian in there. Ooh, there you go, there you go. T take a little dog from the archers, paint him up, and stick him inside the King Cake. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, John, you've received your whole kit caboodle. I think we went over yeah. what it was, but feel free to refresh. Um, uh, so, yeah, I started with it. the with the Bretonian Army box. Mm -hmm. uh, I already have a big Bretonian Army, but want to get more of some of the new models. So I got that. That came with the main rule book. I got both of the Army List books, so the Forces of Fantasy and the Ravening Hordes. Mm -hmm. um, since I also own a Tomb Kings Army, I went ahead and picked up the Arcane Journal for Tomb Kings and for Bretonia. I bought both of the card packs for those two armies and then i bought the lores of magic card thank goodness and you the, did uh, common magic items thank goodness oh, you did yeah. i knew they would disappear immediately yeah. and yep. probably not come back in yeah um, I, I think the only thing they confirmed they're reprinting as far as cards is the core ones they will keep reprinting yeah, yeah. Well, and again, these aren't absolutely necessary. They're not the unit cards, like like you see for no, Sigmar no. or 40K. They are just reminder cards of abilities, like for the Bretonians, you get the virtues, that kind of stuff. So they're not really that critical. It's probably on your and, army list anyway. And there's but, ways you to know. make your own versions. They're out there. They look like magic cards. It, there's there's workarounds, yeah. but like I, I, I like to have official stuff and send my money to Games Workshop, and I love those cards, so absolutely it's it's that little bit of land yet makes your makes your game a little fancier you got some cards laying out there all pretty with some artwork on them but wait 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 you, you got it we got a was it is it a cajun or a creole word word oh i said land yet. yeah i mean it's a french word french. it just means a little something extra okay okay so like if you go to a restaurant and you order a plate of food and they throw on like a little scoop of jambalaya or something that's land yeah yeah it just means a little something extra i say i'm used um, to the terminology but i want to make sure that everyone else gets used to as well not a problem. Yep, that just slips out every now and then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the other thing I ordered, which, by the way, from me, this is going to be a lot of positivity. I love the old world release. I'm very excited about it. This is the first negative I'll bring up, sure, and it yeah. makes me a little sad, but this is a production thing. So back when they released the new version of Horus Heresy, one of the things they released was a galactic map, which showed the layout of the galaxy all with like the current state of the galaxy mm -hmm. and everything that was going on. Looked gorgeous. I was so excited I ordered it. So when they came out with the old world map, 
I went ahead and ordered that too. It's like, you know, do I need it? Absolutely not. Is it just gonna be something on my wall? Yes, but did I order it? Absolutely. Here's the problem. So it comes in a little folded cardboard piece and inside is the map that's folded, I don't know, 10 times. Right. First of all, the cartographer and me, you never fold a map, you roll a map, but right. we'll just move that's, on from that. I'm with you, I'm with you. <laughs> Cause you never get the creases out. But the way that they put it inside the little cardboard folder is that they glue the back of the map onto the sheet of cardboard so it doesn't fall out. But then they wrap it in plastic, so it can't fall out anyway. Okay. Which means when you unfold the entire map, that cardboard slip that goes around it is glued onto the back. And when I had my horse heresy map, I tried to very gently peel it off, and it actually started to tear the paper of the map. So huh. I ended up just cutting around it, and there's a big oval-shaped chunk of cardboard on the back of my Horus Heresy map. Unfortunately, they did the same thing with this map. I really wish they would just would have stuck it inside the cardboard, yeah. then wrapped it in plastic, and it would just kind of, you know, fall out when you open it. But they didn't. But again, Games Workshop didn't do it. The production facility did. But they glue the map fully onto the inside of the cardboard, which means I'm going to have to, I don't know, I'll look up online, maybe Are I can steam it or something. I don't know. It's a little yeah, frustrating. Yeah. I, I mean... It's good to know because I, I have I have that map and then do you remember the old Age of Sigmar when they came we, our first season of War they had the map of Guy Ran yeah. yeah I have yeah, I have absolutely. that still because I ran that campaign for my local store oh, so yeah. I want to frame both of those but mm -hmm. I'm trying to think like that piece of make cardboard maybe I could put more cardboard around it and make it just it's just to be thicker so once I frame it I'll be okay but like can you like frame yeah. it to be my issue. Well, that's the thing is, is if you leave it completely on, it actually hangs outside the map a little bit, which is why for the Horus Heresy map, I just trimmed around place. it. Okay. So now when I hang the map on the wall, which is up in my gaming room, you can't see the piece of cardboard back there. But again, I'd rather just be able to completely remove that cardboard right. packaging, get rid of it, and then have the map. But it's it's very difficult with the amount of glue they put on it. But I mean, the map itself looks beautiful. The production of the map is amazing, and I'm so glad that I have it. But mm -hmm. Just that little production. But I mean, other than that, the the other products I've received, they all look great. They're in great condition. I mean, the the artwork, the art direction on the whole thing, the mm -hmm. colors, the patterns, the backgrounds on the pages, wow, it, it just all looks fantastic. It's they, they did a really nice job laying this out. And giving it that kind of, yeah, this is still kind of 8th edition fantasy feel. It still right. has that look to it. They, of course, you're using a lot of the art assets, which really gives me a lot of nostalgia. A lot of these old pictures. I'm like, oh, I, I remember first seeing that picture, like the one with the uh, the river trolls, and they're standing in the river, oh, like the swamp area, vomiting. and it's got the Empire guys, and he's just vomiting right on the Empire guy. I'm like, that guy's not having a good day. <laughs> no. I mean, he's probably going to die in this war, but he's not having a good day today. Just those very evocative pieces of artwork. They're all over these books and, and cards, and it's, it's fantastic. I really like it. That's so awesome. Like I so said, having the one book, I've been pouring through it. Um, thankfully... Uh, my, I ordered my stuff online, but my FLGS got all their books in on time. So my local gaming club, someone bought through there, so they got everything that they wanted. So I've been able to peruse and look through the, the books and use them for games and such. And like, yeah, you're absolutely right. Even like the high elf, just like old classic high elf art. Just like, oh man, just, just love it. Just love it. It takes you back. <laughs> uh, I've never left apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other, I'll add one other thing. So not from the Games Workshop release, but so my old Bretonian army, of course, is all fully based and painted mm -hmm. and everything. And I've been trying to think, what do I want to do about their bases? Since the base size of the Bretonian warhorses is now slightly larger. Right. So you know, do I rip all their bases off, get all new bases, put them on, and then rebase everything? That that just looks exhausting to do. I don't having, really want to do having it. done it thousands of times. <sighs> It's, it goes quicker than you think. It still sucks. Yeah. Well, of course, there's the up other option. There's a lot of third-party companies that are out there, and they're making like uh, little frames that you put around that just expand your base size. Mm -hmm. Then you can either just leave the frame on or actually just now you just have to touch up the little edge there, just paint it to match the rest of your bases. Or the option that I decided to go with is I found somebody on Etsy who makes movement trays scaled to the current larger size but the holes and the slots in them are for the smaller sized miniatures. So it essentially converts up your entire unit to the proper size and width. So I ordered right now, I ordered those for my Bretonian lances mm -hmm. because the last time, of course, in eighth edition, the lance was not truly- It was, it was, a, a, it was a square, yeah. It was, it was a block. So all of my knights right now, are, I have movement trays for them, but they're all those rectangles. Right. I needed the lance shape again. 
of course, I threw away my old ones from 20 years ago. <laughs> um, I'll never need these so, again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I got those and then they will actually scale it up. So it will be the correct size and shape and everything. So I'm excited. I got those in really nicely made. Um, I, I felt happy for the manufacturers. So I got an estimated date of delivery and the guy sent me a message like, I'm so sorry. We got slammed with orders and I'm way behind. I'm sure every one of his 3D printers was running 24 hours a day oh, just sure. throwing smoke. Um, I'm like, hey, no worries. I'm glad your business is booming. Print them whenever you get around to it. And I've already gotten them. So wow. you know, at the same time that I get my uh, old world stuff, I also got all those movement trays. So I am ready to go. That is fantastic. My club, uh, my local local group that plays regularly, uh, one member in there, he has the filament printer. So mm -hmm. he got the STLs, or maybe he created himself. I mean, he's an engineer. He could probably figure out the math of that much better yeah, and quicker. Pretty straightforward. And he has just been hammering them out for the, like, in like, I have a ton over there for the same thing where it's just like old, old base sizes, bigger, bigger trays. Just mm -hmm. so, cause between all of us, we have so many different armies. It's like, why not just have a bunch at the club? Mm -hmm. I have some for my stuff. Um, he's just constantly printing and being very generous with that. It's easier. Um, now some, one game at my local group, they played on old base sizes, old movement trays. And I think mm -hmm. I'm going to start, it was like a teaching game, so it's like, sure, but like after a while, I think we're all going to have to switch to that, whether we like it or not. Some some guys are like, oh, I like my old trays because they're touched up. I'm like, we'll take these new trays and redo it because <laughs> templates and stuff are going to change drastically with that. Um, yeah, I, I had considered that first when I saw it and I thought, okay, so when you've got a ranked unit of infantry, you know, it, it may be adjusted by like one model. Mm -hmm. I mean that, that, but then yeah, the people have brought up it's it's the templates that make the difference. Right. Is, you could still figure you know, it out, but I, I I I'm already past using old base sizes against old base sizes. People are doing that great, but I would say you need to make sure that templates could cause an issue. So if you're not using templates, you're probably fine for whatever reason. But well, also if you're just way more casual, if this is just garage yes. hammer, you and a couple of buddies, and you just don't really care, you're just playing the game to play the game. You know, so what a template hits three more guys. It, it, it's not going right, to, hopefully I'm, that's not going to be the deciding factor in the game. But, you know, if it is now nah, whatsoever, I mean, that means your templates hit theirs just as many too. So, right. Eh. As a, uh, as someone who's going to practice for tournaments and like worlds and stuff like yeah. that, I want to get used to the new stuff, but I get it too. And here's the thing, like I'm, I'm looking at um, like my Tomb King box I got here. Mm -hmm. Well, I already have a Tomb King's army. If I'm honest, because Tomb Kings will not be my main force. I'm probably going to take these and put them on old base sizes to match my 8th edition army. Steal oh, those okay. bases to make my new high elf army, which, because like my, I, that way I don't have to rebase any of my old high elves. I also have high elves as a new army on new bases. And then Bretonians is a brand new army for me as well. So I'm going to use that purely new bases. So I will have specific armies. And if I ever decide, like, oh, you know what? I, I really love Tomb Kings. I want to play them in this edition, then I'll worry about rebasing or stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, with exception of like the dragon. The dragon's only on that base. It wasn't in Old World. I'll only use the new stuff. So it'll go in the appropriate size base. I'm I'm trying to figure out what to do with Cetra. Because <laughs> he's on a much newer base than what he was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because his old base was just nonsense. It was, nonsense. It was complete nonsense. <laughs> but, well, even something like that. I mean, if the base is significantly bigger... You could even, since height is not that important in the game at all, you could even just take the old bases, stick them on top, and right. then just, you know, well, if you're using flocking like you're supposed to, because mm -hmm. this is back from a long time oh, ago, yeah. you could just flock over those edges and no one will ever notice. Well, I'm curious because I wonder if that base that he's on is still the four horses wide or if it's slightly bigger. Mm -hmm. If it's the exact same, I could just swap them over without much issue. Well, it's quite bigger because the, the horse, well, I don't know. I don't know if those yeah. horses are on the bigger bases. Because like the Bretonian war horses are slightly get bigger. the larger bases, but I I believe the peasant horses get the, the smaller, more traditional, like 25. Yeah. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll figure that out. That's, yeah. it, I got time. I got time. Plus I'm playing, I'm painting my, my lovely, uh, get, to get one here. My cities, of Sigmar army, my living cities. I got that to do first before Ooh, I do anything else. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I said, I'm waiting for my stuff. I can't wait. Um, I'm curious, uh, have you been building lists at all, John? Uh, I have. So I, I got builder? in and... Old World Builder? Uh, I did I did start using Old World Builder after you sent it to me. Yes. Um, I, uh, I kind of dove in at first and started just, let me put in all the models that I have and see where I am. What can I do with this? Right. Uh, just, just to kind of feel out how the list building works. 
Um, nice. It had all the, the rules kind of built into it. I could use that. I could lay out the army the way that I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I am doing the more traditional Bretonian list, not one of the, the you know, fringe ones that's in the Arcane Journal. Um, but there's some of the things in there that I didn't really know what they were and what they meant because I didn't have my books yet. So right. once I got my books, now unfortunately, I received my books late Friday night when I got home and I had the package waiting there. Uh, side note, we are moving our Kung Fu school this, this whole past week and this week. Um, so I was very busy Friday night. I got mm -hmm. home late, picked up the box, brought it in, cracked it open, looked at it all oohed and odd. <laughs> Opened it, smelled, <laughs> and left. <laughs> well, I, you know, I woke up first thing Saturday morning, got into a truck, and then we were running U-Haul runs all day, and I got home late. And so I looked at my stuff again as I walked in. I'm like, neat, there it is. <laughs> so I had a chance to glance at it this morning a little bit too. Um, so I'll probably sit down this evening and actually – open up all the books, read what everything does, ex you know, specifically what all the abilities are. Cause I know like lots of the names of the virtues are all the same as they were in eighth edition, but that doesn't mean that they do the same things. Right. Look at all that kind of stuff. So I'll make more refined army lists. Um, so have, have you been building lots of lists and trying yeah. different things? You just focusing on high elves for right now. I, I'm just focusing on high elves. I've, I've read. So we also have the legacy scrolls, which are our scrolls, the legacy yeah. army mm -hmm. books are out now. I read through the Dark Elf one since that's one of my armies. Very excited for it. Oh my gosh, it seems so good. They got demonology, which is like, oh, that's such a good lore. <laughs> um, but I've been resisting. They're evil. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Um, <laughs> yes. But I've been. Yes, they are. But despite that, I, I've also purposely not looked at High Elf or Tomb King stuff. I've just like let me mm. let me focus on High Elf or yeah. I've not focused on Wood Elves or Tomb Kings. Let me focus on right. High Elves, um, because that's the army I want. Uh, as I said, I, I kind of thought this through because reading the high elf book, everything is still good. <laughs> like, it's like, we're still elves. We're still good. We're not. Um, yeah. They're, they're elves. They're going to be slightly better than everybody. Right. Yes. That's, that's the just this dick. <laughs> yeah. And to be fair, like it doesn't see, it's not as overblown. Like I'm glad to always strikes first, always strikes last thing has changed. Magic dominance is kind of gone. Um, I can still magically dominate, but the spells aren't going to wipe you off the board. Uh, so right. things are toned down. From the couple games I had, things are toned down. Uh, Swordmaster seemed great. Um, White Lions feel great. Phoenix Guard feel great. So that old battle of which one do I choose is back. Mm -hmm. So being stuck in that loop, uh, I said, okay, let me take a step back. And then, uh, you know, talking to Tom uh, about purchasing some of his high elves. Like, l let me think about this. All right, so obviously I'm doing Terathi. Obviously it's in the old world. So they've left Uthuan and they've come over to the old world to visit their towers and such their tours as they call them what would come over on a ship in my mind and what i did is i, I kind of focused on what would make sense if the high elves were standing a, sending a standard militia for some random noble terathi and her family over to the old she's calling it what would be sent along and then i allowed myself one to two fun choices like sky cutter chariots that, that that was an option i did not take one though <laughs> Um, well, they can just fly beside the boats as they come across the ocean. Which actually, I mean, to be <laughs> fair, anything in Lothran would be normal. Um, yeah. But what I did, I, I didn't want to do at the start, because like she's not, at, at this day and age, she's not like, like Terathi in, in uh, Age of Sigmar to me, like she's big, she's known, that sort of stuff. I don't want her to be as like overblown in this yet, because she's still coming into her own. Which, actually, hmm. a little sneak peek, uh, I'm going to put this show out on Tuesday. Thursday, I'm going to release a show where I cover all of the main characters from high elves and what's going on in the timeline mm -hmm. as well as predicting if we'll see them or a new model mm -hmm. so it's a, it's yeah it's a self chat but uh i like it, it. i like it we're in a very fun place right now to for a lot of creativity um but anyway terathi didn't want to be overblown so i said okay obviously lothran seagar i should probably take some of those they're going to be on a boat yep Loth and Seaguard are actually pretty good, too, so I felt pretty happy with that. Spears um, and bows are usually pretty good. Yes. Well, so the, I'm not sure if you read it. The Sea Guard, mm -hmm. uh, there used to be an ability with the Sea Helm, where instead of standing and shooting, you could take a leadership. And instead of standing and shooting, you could reform. So I could be like this huge, long block, mm -hmm. and I could reform to be steadfast. Yeah. Now, Loth and Seaguard... Now, granted, the steadfast rules have changed. Everything's a little different. Sea Guard mm -hmm. now can stand and shoot and reform. Ooh. So probably what's going to happen is still be that line, stand and shoot with the whole long front rank, reform, and still have supporting attacks. 
no matter yeah, what. Yeah, reform and block up. Nice, yeah. nice, nice, yeah. But they just do that naturally, so they're good. Um, I did add a few archers and a few spearmen. Nothing crazy. I figured Sea Guard would be the better choice just for narrative wise. And like I said, they are they're they're the ones I like too in the rules, so I'm gonna lean heavier into them. And maybe like a small contingent of maybe like ten spearmen with five archers or something, just for fun. Any um, shadow warriors? Do you lean into that at all? No, no. So they would be a crazy choice. Because why would they leave Ooh. attacking the Dark Elves right now? You know what I mean? With the lore going yeah. on. Um so that, that because, it, the dark, because the Dark Elves are are, are are trapped all up in uh they don't exist um, i don't know about and whatever yeah they're they're all they're all hiding away they're, yeah, that's fine they're a legacy you don't need to worry about them no you do you do they're so important <laughs> uh, don't do that don't know fight tooth and nail um but uh so i also grabbed one to two units of Illyrian reavers because Illyria was always my favorite i love horses i love mm -hmm. that sort of culture um so my prior army was sort of based off of it, but it's like it was like a weird mix of some Lothran painted stuff, some non-painted stuff. And I thought I was going to do a Charse, but I was like, you know what? I've always been an Illyria fan, hmm. so I'm going to do a full Illyria theme. And that's the White Lions, right? Charse is White Lions. Illyria yeah. is horses. That's right, yeah. Because they, 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 that's the Fast Cav, I believe, and yes. the Silver Helms were like the nobles, and then the Dragon Princes were like the Heavy Cav that they had, is yes, that right? Yes, correct. The Dragon Princes were Caldor. Um, so the I only thing I remember about the high elves is them dying on the end of my lances. So Ooh, it's war, <laughs> son. It's war, son. <laughs> so, so Lothran Sea Guard, some spearmen, some archers, and then Illyrian Reavers. Because I'm from Illyria, I actually always take the banner of Illyria on Tirathi. Oh, nice, nice. uh, it's a good banner. It's not the. I don't know if it's the best banner, but like it's kind of a narrative choice um, that I will take more often than not. Kind of. It's. It, I think I looked at that banner and I said, uh, "That's my Kraith." Just like in, in Daughters of Cain, I have to play Kraith because yep. that's just what I love. I saw that. I'm like, I don't know if it's useful all the time, but I want to play it all the time. Uh, and then I said Swordmasters because Swordmasters, because I yeah. obviously I have an Archmage. Swordmasters would accompany an Archmage. That makes sense. They're also the ones Absolutely. that tra they, they're more prone to travel. I did grab some White Lions mm -hmm. because I figured if, you know, they know they're going to the Old World, they might visit the Wood Elves. There's trees. Axes are good. That made sense logically for me. Mm -hmm. No Phoenix Guard. Okay. I didn't bring any Phoenix Guard, uh, no Anointed, because I'm just like, why would they leave? Things are at peace. They should be near their shrine. There's no need for them to go out. In my mind, yet. Narratively, I'll grow the army over time. But right now, I said no. Wow. Um, one Bolt Thrower, and then I grabbed a unit of five. I might bump it to a unit of ten, Dragon Princes. Oh, okay. I could see a small unit of Dragon Princes wanting to be like, we're going to reclaim our settlements or something. You know, it it made some sense, but not a huge force of them. It would be it'd be five idiots who were, you know, like drunk on the town, be like, fuck it, we're gonna go take our old settlement and oh that ship's leaving, we're coming aboard and everyone else... let's go. Yeah. Um also I, I should say I brought no dragons. No Phoenix and since there's no Phoenix Guard, there's no Phoenixes. Uh did not bring a dragon. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. Did not bring a dragon. Uh honestly, I see a dragon being one of the first major includes because the dragons in the in the stories they were fine and capable of flying from Uthuan two battles in the old world fighting the battle turning around shortly after and going home the rider would just sleep did, on the saddle so did just sound asleep as yeah. the dragons fly um didn't the original eltharian come on like a griffin or something eltharian's on a griffin yes it is it and is that, that's where he is now, because it was when yes. he got blinded, which is when he went off the Griffin on foot, right? It was, but that was in 6, and they kind of went back on that story. They retconned it. Okay. Yeah, so he's... So, so, so in Old World, he's back on his hippogri or his uh, his Griffin? Yeah, so think of, like, the multiple timelines. Like, that would be the timeline that goes to Storm of Chaos. Okay. Uh, it, as far as the timeline we're on, he's always been on his Griffin. He's not blinded. He fought Ground the Paunch, and he is around, Um but also, like, a griffin, I don't know if a griffin has the stamina to fly across the sea. I'll probably bring one eventually. No, no you have to keep it on a boat. Big yeah. cage or something like that. <laughs> just big nest. Bunch of feathers. <laughs> There's one boat, and it's just the nest with the griffin sitting inside. <laughs> um, and outside of that, I I threw everything else away as far as possibilities. I'm like, no, I don't want to take any shadow warriors. It doesn't make sense. And even though they're good, chariots, why well, would we bring chariots over on the initial force? That, that, that seems kind of weird. We have the Alarian Reavers to scout out. I said, what's the one thing that I love in 8th edition 
that I would bring over as just that fun choice. To me, this is the fun choice. Um, it, one sword, too. And that's Sisters of Avalor. Oh, yeah. And, like, it's kind of like, you know, in my mind, they would want to go maybe reestablish connections with Ariel and Wood Elves, because that is kind of tied. But really, just, like, I wanted to bring them. They make sense to me as far as just, like, the cool thing to just randomly show up. And because of that, I'm also going to include a handmaiden if I can find the model. Mm -hmm. I have one, but I'm not going to rebase her, and that's a hard model to find. Um, or I'll do a clever kit bash or something. But yeah, so yeah, like, people know what you mean. Because then over time, I think like you know what, it's time. Here comes the dragons, and I'll have some dragons and stuff added. Maybe increase the dragon princess or bring a dragon into it, and I'll be like, they sh they show up for support, and I can have more to play with. And then the next time I decide to grow the army, I'll be here's the phoenixes. Bring more phoenixes in. So. Yeah, when you get over and they start moving around, they see how much is going on in the old world. They can send some messages back home, like, we, we need a few more people over. You can put some more boats right. out. Come on, let's, right. let's, yeah. I could easily buy it all and just start repainting it all or rebase my old stuff. I'm just like, no, I want to give myself an excuse to slowly grow this and add it as the narrative beats hit and seem fun for me. And like I said, I don't, I don't mind anything in the high elves. It all seems good. So that's why I want like a narrative approach and kind of force limiting myself. And I, I have been playing with my old models on the, on the movement trade resizers mm -hmm. games with those same units over and over and over again like i am going to master those units before i even think about how narratively include something else so whether that's it's a, it's a good way to play so a way that i like to play in any of the games workshop games is i build the army that i think is cool and i want to play and then i try and play it to the best of my ability but i will absolutely make what most people consider suboptimal choices to have beautiful models or a cool background story that sure i'll just learn how to play it better and, and and fight from there. There we go. Well, it, what, what I like about what you just explained is you have this kind of this story thread that you're just rewinding it a little bit, you know, maybe going earlier in Tayrathi's existence to kind of figure out what's going on, you're kind of coming up with the history and being able to craft it going forward to see if you hit the same end point or, you know, you can always diverge a little bit and, you know, tell a slightly different story, whatever, but mm -hmm. you've got that that kind of unbroken string. I, I have the complete opposite problem. So yeah. all of the lore that I had for my Bretonians when I previously played them, they're not going to be born for centuries. Right. So yeah. <laughs> none of that exists. I mean, I guess I could always say, well, all of their great grandfathers had the exact same name in heraldry. He's like, no. Nah. So I'm, I've got all my heraldry books back out. Nice. I'm looking at everything that I have. Um, that's one of the main reasons why I went ahead and bought the Bretonian starter box is yes, I'm gonna start playing my games with all of the current painted Bretonians that I have. And, but this gives me a little bit of freedom here where now I can take all the new models that come in that new box and start to paint up things to kind of craft the story of the Duke that I want, knowing that maybe in generations down the line, he leads to what I played before, but not a single person in my entire army will possibly survive to make it to Warhammer Fantasy Battle, they will all be long dead. Sure. They, they will have, you know, great mausoleums and and uh, uh, grave sites and everything, and people can can remember them and be honored by them. But they're all dead. So <laughs> yeah, I've had to kind of look at it and say, hmm, how do I want to recraft this tale and come up with something new? But that's where digging into these heraldry books is giving me this option to come up with some new stuff to paint the new models to kind of. Right. I'm still going to keep it themed to what I have all originally painted, but I can just, you know, take a little sidestep and come up with something new. So, no, yeah, it, it'll be interesting. I'm, I'm I'm excited to dive into it. Your old Bretonians, are they, like, all individual heraldry, like, the, that classic style? I assume it's not mm. the universal style that we're looking at today as an option. It, no, it's, it's actually interesting. So I diverged from what was kind of shown in the old army books, and I did my own thing with it. Mm -hmm. So looking at patterns of heraldry now, patterns of heraldry in, in, in real life and history, the, there was not what they promoted in the old army book of like, well, if you're low level, you only get, you know, a split color, and then you start to get other little charges on it, right. and it gets more and more yeah. complex. That's not the way it works. You, you have what you have. Um, 
but it's a good way to represent those things. So I definitely did like my knights errant have very simple patterns. My knights of the realm have some charges added to them, split fields. And, and I slowly build the complexity till I get to my grail knights where I did a whole bunch of really fancy stuff. And then the Lord of my Bretonian army was the fanciest with all the little teeny tiny detail and extra charges and escutcheons floating in there. Just everything I could possibly pull out of my heraldry bag, I could put on there. Um, but what I decided to do is divide the army up so like i i picture knights errant they're all just kind of gathered together so they are a mishmash of lots of different colors in that unit just all over the place mm -hmm. um the same thing with my grail knights those are the few random grail knights that have gathered together to support this battle they're a big mishmash of colors right but my lances of knights of the realm what i did is i chose a main color like one of my lances is i'll say like blue thing so all of their heraldry okay. is predominantly blue. And then, so each one of them has a unique pattern to their heraldry and maybe, you know, opposite colors that will splash in there, but they all have blue running through them. And then another lance is all red. And then what I did is my Lord is a mixture of blue and red. So this is his army. So it still looks somewhat unifying. Um, my, uh, my men at arms, my archers, again, they'll be themed. What I did is I, as I chose one, it was the unit champion. I chose the unit champion out of each of my uh, Knights of the Realm lances. Right. And I took all of my peasantry and I painted them like, these are the peasants brought by that particular knight. Oh, okay. So again, they're all themed to his color. So when you look at the army as a whole, it, yeah, it looks like a clown threw up on it. There's a million different <laughs> colors, a very classic Bretonian thing. But when you look at each unit, they're much more focused in their colors. This is the blue lance. This is the red lance. Right. The, the Knights Errant are still mixed, but fairly basic patterns. The Grail Knights are uh, wildly mixed because they're all individual unique heroes. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, you look at like my trebuchet, it's mapped after one of the particular knights in the army. So it's all color themed to individual people. So again, it's not as solid color as the new stuff, not as crazy and wild and unique as the old stuff. I had just kind of created this middle pattern. So it kind of fits both of them. I'm happy with it. I mm -hmm. like it. I think I'm going to keep following it. I'll say, yeah, because like, to me, I'm thinking like, the approach i'm doing where i'm taking an army and redoing it i know yeah, that's not your plans and I'm, I'm not trying to force my will upon you but i would mm -hmm. see it as take that old feel that old army so you have the blue lance and say the red lance mm -hmm. well in the old world i would make one lance and mix those two colors together because thinking about what humans would do occasionally at some point oh we there's a feud between these brothers and they split one took the red one took the blue and then you could have just like weird things like that where it's just like tie it back together and, and think about how it fell apart hmm. and yeah, reverse. Okay. And like I said, that's just a way to, hmm. if I was doing your, your art and if I, if I had your army in Bretonia and I was doing a fresh version, that's probably how I would approach it. How did this fall apart and become what it is? Because as humans, we just slightly change things. And then like three or four generations, it's like, what the hell? What's that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like I said, well, if you're and, using your old models, you should not do that. You should keep it the theme you have for sure. Well, and again, that, that's what gives me some of the freedom. I, I'm still trying to decide, which is why I've got all the books out and kind of digging through is mm -hmm. like the new lances that I get in the starter box. Do I go and I vary those to different colors? Do I do a green lance and like a yellow lance? Mm -hmm. Or do I go more with the red and blue and lean into, you know, different variations on that? Now, when you do, when you do heraldry properly, you have uh, colors and metals. Uh, you have a limited pool of colors that are traditional to use. The later on in, in real life history that you go, you get extra colors added to it, like oranges and purples will start to show up, but they're not really traditional. I mean, traditional right. is like your red, your green, your black, your blue, those kind of things. Right. Uh, and then your your metals are yellow and white to represent silver and gold. And you're never supposed to put a color on a color or a metal on a metal. Right. You always put a metal on a color. So that way it contrasts. The idea being is you're looking across a battlefield. If you have blue on top of red, your, the human eye is not going to see a difference. It's a big, mashy, mushy brown color. So you have blue with like white on it, and that stands out. So I've got like predominantly my blue lance is uh, blues and yellows. My red lance is reds and whites. So I can always splash in like a lance of reds and yellows and a lance of blues and whites. So I can still go with some of those color oh, themes, yeah, yeah. alternate the metals with them. So again, I've got some options. That's why I really want to look at everything that I have going there. Um, but that's why I'm so excited about this. It's mm -hmm. gotten me back to what I used to do with this 15, 20 years ago. 
it's it's that little nostalgia hit that's that's getting in there and it gives me a reason I've, I've got these books on my bookshelves it gives me another reason to get them out knock the dust off a little bit and really start digging through all of these yeah um army different. army crafting is just pheno- is just phenomenal like I, i'm looking at my bretonians too and like i fell in love with the blue and black color scheme in the book mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. i need to read the lore to make sure that that lore jives with me and what i want to do if I my default backup actually this time I have decided on it will be just black and gold Steelers colors, Pittsburgh um, colors. Those are those are Saints colors. Go Saints! No, 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 no. You're black and true gold. We're black and gold. We're. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you're 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 we're, you're, we're non-metallic metals. You're metallic metals. <laughs> <That's> right, <yeah. laughs> there you go. Non-metallic metals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I think that'll probably be my my backup. Will be the you know the black and yellow. Um, yeah. for Steelers and stuff a little splash of white here and there um but yeah it's it's fun because like I just love I mean that's my favorite part like I, I'm loving building the cities of Sigmar army because I themed it and I found something I'm in love with so that's and I'm excited to see how armies are going to appear from that um new armies I know people are going to bring out their old stuff and put it down that's fine um as long as it's painted Bra. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. okay play play with whatever you got um <laughs> but it's gonna be fun to see how people take new interest and in new design takes plus also just new painting styles on these models that like you and I and the community just love to death. I yeah. actually, here's a question. Did you pick up any of the made to order Tony and stuff yesterday? You might already have it. So uh, I didn't, I've got a lot of it already. Um, and actually the pieces that, uh, so the sorceress, I've got her, the foot sorceress. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the pieces that I really love out of the Bretonians, I think we spoke last time that I already have. I have Raphonce de Lyonnais, the, the battle standard bearer, this little Joan of Arc. I've yeah. got her. Um, I've got from my Bretonian Lord, which was my custom made Lord, is actually, and this kills me now that I did it, but you know, <laughs> history is history. Yeah. So I had the Green Knight. And at the time, our little play group, we could just kind of made a, a casual decision we're not going to use special characters they're always like crazy and over the top we're just going to play models make up our own heroes and stuff like that so like what am i going to do with this green knight so i got rid of the green knight i kept his horse Uh, i see i see that's why it hurts i got you that makes sense yeah uh um and then i took in the very original release of warhammer fantasy fifth edition which where they dropped the plaster bretonians and the lizard men if you bought it like on release day, they had in there a special Bretonian Lord model. He's got like, got like a big, almost like a Roman crest on his helmet. Oh, He's nice. got a big giant lance. Okay. Um, and it was just him and like a plastic horse. But I have him. So I mounted him on the Green Knight's horse with the fancy, uh, like the frilled barding that it has. Right. So that's, and it's rearing up. So that's my Bretonian Lord is nice. the Green Knight's horse with the 30 year old hey. limited edition Bretonian Lord model sitting on it. So like I've got him. I don't. I don't really want to replace him with anything. Um, we also discussed that I've got uh, for my archers. I've got the old uh, uh, Robin Hood, Friar Tuck, Little John thing. Oh the, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I've got those models. So there's a lot of those characters that I have from the earlier versions of Bretonia that I don't necessarily want to replace. And I mean, other than that, I already got a trebuchet. I've, I've got so much of that stuff. So yeah, I didn't dive on it right away. Um, right. I may in the future go back and pick at a couple of those things, but between what I have and what came in that starter box, because there's the new like Hippogriff Lord and right. those kind of things that I can splash in that I didn't have before. But no, that, that's yeah, nice. no, I mean, I never had um, uh, Lumen Lincor on on his uh, Hippogriff because again, we didn't use special characters. Right. So, but so now I'm glad I've got the Hippogriff with the Bretonian Lord on it. I will definitely take whatever my lord's name is because I don't really want to replace that unique model with him. So I'm going to have to figure out what I can do. Maybe some battles, if it's a really big battle, I'll put him on the hippogriff and just, you know, paint him up the exact same way that he is on the horse and just say, oh, well, you know, That's he's living his horse yeah. in the stable. He's going to go hop on his hippogriff because he needs to be very mobile for this battle. That's fair. I, if I bring a lot of Pegasus knights, maybe he'll fly around with them. I mean, or you could just use that old model as, as the green knight. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like it's just a take on it. He looked different back then. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just take a big bucket of green paint, just dip the whole model in, shake them off. <laughs> oh, don't shake it. That's extra paint. That, <laughs> just, that's just let it go. Let it rip. Um, I, I, I will say, and someday we'll, we'll have to share this. Uh, being an old, old school gamer, I mean, I've got I've got the uh, flocked bases with the goblin green trim on them. Okay. So 
yes, all of my new models that I'm painting, I'm going with the flocked bases and the goblin green trim because that's the way an old fantasy army is supposed to look. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm actually unsure of my basing. So, like, obviously, if the Tomb Kings, I'll match the old Tomb Kings basing I have from yeah. the army I have. Um, I, I don't know yet if I want to keep the flocking going. Just because no, I'm goblin green, it's, no, no, it's I, the I've way always, to go. I was more in Fang Brown and then like a green, dark uh, green flock. I haven't yeah. ruled it out. I actually was running low on flock, so I bought more just in case. But I'm not sure how I want to base him yet. But like I said, that's so far down the line. It's yeah. it's flock is the easiest and be done with it, but we'll one see. One of my favorites going back through some of my old models is being a, a much younger, less experienced modeler and gamer when I was doing this. There's a lot of my smaller war horses. Mm -hmm. Of course, there there were the slot of base horse bases that had the right. two kind of rail holes in them. And then the horses just had the two rails on them and you slotted them in. Well, they never matched up completely. There's always a little bit of wiggle room, which was good. That way it fit in there and you could put the glue on it. But some of the earliest ones I ever did, I didn't know about like filling those little gaps or what I ended up doing oh, later so on. Like the glue, little, yeah. <laughs> you know, later on, I would put a little piece of tape over it and then paint mm -hmm. flock over it. Some of my very oldest ones, you can see on the base after the horse is in these like little tiny rectangular gaps there where I just I didn't fill it. And then the paint dripped through and dry. And I'm like, eh, whatever. It's a model. And I, <laughs> yeah. So I think I may go back on some of those and like pack the hole in the bottom and then paint over just so it doesn't look ridiculous. That but. was one of the benefits of having the rebase from my from Fantasy to Sigmar and back mm -hmm. is I yeah. got to fix all that at the time. So, yeah, I, I hear you there. Um, <laughs> as far as the that made to order release, uh, I did buy a few things for myself. Oh, uh, you get? I, a Bretonian BSB on horse. Uh, um, I didn't know if I wanted it on the Griffin, so I was like, I'll put it on the horse. I like that model. It's a cool model. Um, I also grabbed the Lord with Lance. Uh, mm -hmm. My friend grabbed Lord with Greatsword. So I was like, well, I'll grab the oh, opposite. Yeah. Let's 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 go. Um, but the damsel duo, because I don't have any damsels. Yep. And they seem to be a necessity. Uh, and then from the Tomb Kings, I just picked up a... Uh, uh, I already have Lich Priests. Uh, my BSB is mm -hmm. on a chariot. I could kit bash mm -hmm. another BSB with what I got. So I just grabbed the uh, Tomb King with the, the sword and shield. Because yep. he looked mm -hmm. cool to me. And it was like, sure, I'll just pick that up. Yeah. I've, I've, I've got I've got all those so far. What else? Did, did you get a Casket of Souls? I already have one. So I'm super jealous. Because uh, a new it, one comes with an inside. Because the new one you can open up and you can see the guy inside. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, no, yeah, I've got the old one. I'm like, ah. Yeah. Oh, it's, well. It's fine. It's a, I, Don't I, open it. It's just, it's never <laughs> open. It's in there. Trust me. Okay. Actually, well, mine's metal, and I can kill somebody with it if I have to, so. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> put that thing in a sock and. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I'm excited because, like, so. Bretonians is what you're going to dive into first fully then, obviously. A hundred percent, yeah. Okay. I, I'll have the Tomb Kings on the side in case I in case I want to play somebody in the only army they have is Bretonia. I'm not a real big fan of Bretonian on Bretonians because it gets really wonky with the, like, who gets all the charges off first? Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, if, if somebody else does Bretonia that I'm going to play, I'll pull out my Tomb Kings. Or it's always there as a loner army. If somebody comes up and says, hey, I really want to try the game. I want to see what's going on. You know what? Here you go. Here's a couple of units. Here's the book for them. I'll write you up a list. You know, let's play 500, 1,000 points, something like that. There you go. You can use that, and then I'll use my Bretonians. And nice. So it's it's there. Once I get my Bretonians exactly where I want, I may go and fiddle with the Tomb Kings a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'll have to see how the local community is on consistency with stuff. I mean, I'm looking at doing, now that I've got my stuff, I'm going to do some local demo days. Um, I, you know, talked to a couple of people about maybe running some like uh, hobby style tournament events later on this right. year. Just some fun, so we'll, something different. We'll see what goes on with that. Yeah. No, it's, that, that makes sense. I, I mean, I thought about it for a while before this made order came out. It's like, should I just leave my Bretonians at the 1250 and just play them out of the box as like a starter thing? But I know me. That's why I was just like, no, I'll buy more stuff. Um, because like I said, I'll have, I I'll have two armies on the new base sizes. So if I mm -hmm. need to teach anybody, I can do that with high elves versus Bretonians. So. Oh, yeah. And I do really appreciate it, you know, from, from the one negative I gave them earlier uh, with the, not, the map gluing problem, uh, one of the things I really do appreciate and really like is in those starter boxes, when you crack them open, in the little instruction guide on how to assemble everything, mm -hmm. 
they have a pre-built army in there with exactly yes. the models that you get in that you can just open it up, assemble those models, and you've got a playable army right there. Yeah, and it's that's already all mapped out for you. It's got all the the rule sheets in there. It's it's, it's really nice. Yeah, that's fantastic. They they really thought through a lot of this. Like I said, it, it's a it's a complete release too. So I, I'm excited. Oh, um, here uh, we should have talked about this I, I i get so confused because i talk about old world so much think about it so much that i'm talking to people in chats like yourself and other people and also that doing with the other podcast which is the weekly podcast as well as random videos i, I want to do what do you think about the orcs and goblins being next um we i know. like it uh yeah i i, I you know there, there's several armies that i'm excited about you know if i ever were to add another army it would probably be wood elves um, mostly because I really like Wood Elves as a concept. You know, if I play Dungeons and Dragons, I'm playing a Wood Elf. Um, also, you know, my favorite army in Age of Sigmar is Sylvaneth, and we all know where that came from. Yep. So I'd probably lean more into that, but I like the diversity that it brings. I mean, Bretonia is relatively a small army. You can push a little bit of Horde with the peasants, but you're probably not going to do too well. You need those lances. Then you go to Tomb Kings. They can get a little bit more Horde-like. Yeah, but they crumble, they, they don't skeletons. run away. It's very different. Right, they have a very different style. Plus, they've got all the... I mean, they really want to lean into chariots and do all the crazy stuff. Hell yeah. Um, but then you get orcs and goblins, and you can really go Horde. You can really push a lot of stuff on the battlefield. Yep. Plus, it also specializes in a very different magical style. I mean, you yep. know, you've got the Tomb King's magic. You've got the Bretonian has access to a couple of different magical lores. Plus, they got the little lore of the lady in their book. Yep. And then now you've got the wall magic. It, it seems like a good option to lean into a very different play style, a very different miniature layout. And, I mean, honestly, like in the, the Warhammer community I grew up in a long time ago, that was the most popular army. If you met people, it's kind of like saying, hey, what are you playing 40K? And somebody says, Space Marines. Back in the day in our group, if we met somebody new, hey, you play Warhammer, what do you play? Chances are they said orcs and goblins. It was they were great miniatures. They were a yep. lot of fun to play. Everybody loves <laughs> slinging uh, right. goblin fanatics out of units of people. Or the um, uh, what, what's the name with the, the little goblin with the pointed hat with the slingshot that he shoots. Oh, doom divers, like, yes, yes, yeah, yes, the, yes. The goblin doom divers, all that kind of stuff. So orcs and goblins, I'm very familiar with as as an opponent. I never had an army, but. Right. I enjoy them. They're a wildly different play style. I think it's a good matchup to kind of mix and create a diversity of armies as opposed to any other ones that kind of copy themselves off of what we play. Hopefully then they'll do an elf one next and that'll give a real nice variation. Yeah, I, I hope so. Um, I, I'm kind of with you. Like I, I love wood elves, but I have a wood elf army that's complete. So I might add a few things to it when they become available. Uh, but not going to rebase it. Same thing with my Dark Elves at this time and Tomb Kings, as I said. But if I think about new armies, I keep thinking about, I have, I played Warhammer Online uh, Age of Reckoning. Mm -hmm. and I, I bought the collection edition, and so I have that Grumlock and Gazbag, like, yep. Black Orc War Boss, and I keep looking at that. It's, it's a beautiful model. I love, actually, it, I have two. One is the original mm -hmm. one that I painted up. It's just a display piece. The other one I found used at a local store in like their second hand bin. The the goblin uh, Gazbag lost the moon part of the staff. Oh, okay, yeah. So okay. I picked it up and I just use it. I think I put something else on it and I use it as a um, uh, what's the the Biggins war boss for my crusade or my path of glory army for my iron jaws. Oh, okay. Because yeah, like, yeah, 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 it's it's the Ard Boys hero essentially now. Um, yeah. But I keep looking at him. I'm like. And then I'll also have a beautiful painted. Uh, my friend Alex painted me a beautiful uh, black orc war boss on like a war pig. It's it's he's a great painter, and it's just been sitting there. I'm like, man, if I I had the chance, <laughs> I, I, I'm not. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to go into it right away. I have plenty on my plate right now, but it's one of those things. Like I, as I said in other shows, I'm buying every book and card that come out for this yeah. game, just in case. And I mean, who doesn't want to paint like 120 night goblins, right? That does not bother me at all. <laughs> you know Prime me. Prime the black, you're almost done. Right? Exactly. You're just putting a little green nose and a little silver tip on a weapon, and you're pretty much good to go. <laughs> Boom, moving on. Yep, exactly. Uh, wow, we'll with see. contrast paints nowadays, yeah, you could really bang that out. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, that's an option. It's it's far from anything else. Like I have plenty to do on my plate right now. Like I said, I have Cities of Sigmar, I have High Elves. I technically have a Napoleonics army sitting right there I need to paint. Oh, that's oh, been sorry. like a long time coming. And then I'll have Tomb Kings and Bretonians to add in as I see fit. So, uh, yeah. Orcs and Goblins, I'm happy to see them in the meta for the Arcane Journals. I can't wait to see it. Uh, but we'll mm -hmm. we'll get there when we get there. Maybe I'll paint it one day. Maybe I won't. Who knows? 
Yeah, it gives you some options, right? I, it, I mean, the way I've been going with uh, Age of Sigmar, at least with the Order factions, I almost <laughs> I have every Order faction except for Lizardmen or Seraphon. Yeah. Well, see, now you can definitely do Lizardmen. I mean, while they are a, a legacy army, again, they're all still there and playable. And yep. pretty much all the models can be transferred over. I mean, the Soros Warrior is going to be a little bit bigger, but yeah, with a little bit bigger base sizes, they'll probably be fine ranking up. It's not a problem. Like I said, I... I, I might not do Lizardmen. That's, the sculpts never did anything for me, like, emotionally. Mm-hmm. Which is why I don't have them for Sigmar yet. Also... Uh, you're, you're like a little dinosaur kid, like a lot of people were? I was a space kid. I liked the, oh. I, I, I went through the Jurassic Park era, then I got afraid of them, then I went to space. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, also, uh. if I bought... If I, if I ever did a Seraphon army, well, then I should do all of the armies, right? Because then I have all of order. Ah, uh, yeah. So I'm yeah. just resisting, so I don't have to. Um, you leave that little gap as like a safety net, right? If I yes. don't do them, I don't have to do every army. <laughs> right. And if I, I like switch, it. switch my focus to old world, then actually I'm excited because if I do more old world stuff, my Sigmar stuff, which I love, can turn into what it should be, which is I will paint this unit for this army. I will, like, yeah. oh, the new um, uh, the new crone coming out for Dogs of Cain. Excited. I'll pick up that box when it comes out and I'll add it to my force. Great. That's yep. And I, I don't have to worry about going way too too aggressive with it like this city's a sigma <laughs> army i'm painting it for a year-long map campaign i'm going to paint it and play it 12 13 times this year probably and then they'll sit in a box yeah. oh well but you'll have 12 or 13 times worth of fun out of it and that's what's important right absolutely it's I, i'll be honest i'm loving the paint scheme of this i know we're this is the old world chat but it's so hard not to want to just dive into old world stuff especially when i come back from my work trip at the end of this week but mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ways models are painting up in the color scheme, the way I figured it out, I'm in so in love with it. That's keeping me going. <laughs> yeah, because you're leaning into like the greens and everything, aren't you? Yeah, I'm doing living cities since like when we did oh, the season yeah, of war. Yep. That's the city that the North America fought for. So I was like, yep. let me just lean into that because I got attached to it way back then. And like, yeah, it's just, it's just, it works really well. It's a great scheme. And it's just playing with greens, yeah. which I don't do often. So I've enjoyed seeing them on like, your your social media, like Instagram and stuff. Well, thank you. Um, I'm enjoying being able to paint them at my leisure. <laughs> Yesterday, so I have right now. I have a unit. I'm, I'm trying to get a thousand points done before the next meeting, uh, which okay. is mid February. Um, I have 23 models to paint: three heroes and 20 Wildwood Rangers, which are proxies for Blackguard. In the in yeah. the unit, uh, I did all the greens at my leisure. Yesterday, or sorry, two days ago, I painted the the flesh on them, which is just the face hands and mm-hmm. arms i did it on two of them and i said you know what i'm done painting for the day and i was allowed to do that and it felt so great <laughs> and you can take a week off to go on your work trip and not have to panic like do i need to bring some paints and a couple of miniatures with me to get them done and... <laughs> i i i used to take stuff to paint on work trips and it is fun and i like it because it's an excuse to get back to the hotel early and not be out too late you know with with your with your work crew but it's such a hassle to take it <laughs> But you know, if you're those paint like bottles one, are, yeah. Like you say, those paint bottles are small enough. If you got like a character, get one of those little tiny like zipper kits, some brushes, some paints, the model in there, a little tiny cup. And then when you're sitting on the airplane, just ask for a water and just bust it out on your little airplane tray and start painting there on the Actually, airplane. Actually, I have um, Battlefield makes these nice little carry cases. Like it's like it's mm-hmm. probably like thirteen by five or six or whatever. Let's say. Yeah, I've got a couple of those. They're like little. They're like firm, but not like they're not hard plastic. But they're kind of right. firm and the yeah. zipper them open. They usually come with some foam in there that you like pluck foam or something right. like that. Right. And if I'm taking just like a yeah. small unit or like a character, I can fit brushes because I cut I cut up the foam to fit my brushes and like mm-hmm. six to eight paints and and like a couple models. I can do that and I've done that. But it's just like I just don't I don't feel like I need to, so I'm not going to. But you can do that. Paint on, come on, then paint on the plane. Let people ask you questions. Now you're like pitching the system to people. Bring a couple extra, you know. I don't know, copies of the rule book and hand them out. That may be okay. Well, I may have, um, <laughs> I may have taken pictures of my friend's uh, high elf section of his forces of fantasy. And I may have printed it out in my printer. I may be mm-hmm. reading it on the plane to study. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but we'll see. Well, that and then your list builder on your phone. You can just you can just theory craft the entire time you're gone. Come back with a finely tuned tournament list right i will be theory and crafting on my phone on the flight for sure like i'll probably put on some like documentary and like halfway through i'll be like mm, what about this what about this like I, that's, that's what i do on planes i documentaries i don't know why 
Um, you'll have your headphones on. You, you will be lost in your own world, and you'll just burst out shouting and wake everybody up on the plane like, Dragon Princes! <laughs> <laughs> That's the key! Yeah. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. But no, um, I'm excited. I, I, I just can't wait. And it's going to be like Friday. Friday, I land in the morning. It's a tradition. I buy a bunch of sushi on the way home for me and the wife, and I eat it. And I'm, like, I'm just going to be old world all weekend long. Like, I'm just going to be like surrounded with it. I'll probably do a show just like, look at all the shit I have. And people will be like, I don't care. <laughs> oh, by the way. um, Look at my stuff. <laughs> behold, my stuff. Uh, I do want to thank everybody that's uh, joined in recently. Uh, we have 471 subscribers on the channel now, which is great. I'm glad you're enjoying this. I pushing 500. We're gonna get you to 500. We are getting you to 500. You know what? I'm excited for the, this video and the video that's releasing in a couple days uh, after this yeah. comes out. So hopefully we get to that 500 and we can keep rocking and rolling. Um, uh, maybe. You gotta have one of those clickbait thumbnails where you're like. Or, you know, pointing at something, and the people just click on it, see you what's know, going on. It's so stupid. Like, I'll, I, I make fun thumbnails, and I'll put like words up there and like a logo or two. There was only one where I did my face, and it was like the first diaries for Cities of Sigmar. And like, my face is on there. I'm just like, like I'm just happy. And yeah, <laughs> I hate algorithms because it was like that one took off crazy. Yep. It's not my best one anymore, but still. Well, you need the clickbait titles like "Has Games Workshop Ruined the Game?" Big question marks, and then the first thing you say is, "No, it's a great game, and I'm having a lot of fun." But that gets people to click it, and all of a sudden your clicks explode, and then it goes viral, and I can't. suddenly you're like driving in a Rolls Royce because you just you can't you can't spend your money fast enough. I, I can't I can't do that. It hurts my it soul. Influence your life. No, I can't. <laughs> I know it's it's terrible. It's toxic, and I hate it. And yeah. I I hate clicking on any videos that are like. There's a couple of people that I've like kind of like soft block their account so i don't even see them in the algorithm because all they have you can say really it. obnoxious you can like, say it I, thumbnails. <laughs> I blocked this course minis i don't care about your shit your, your stuff's awful yep i don't yep. I, and I, oh, I, I i actually i actually did the soft block on um was it ninjon like just he's been there's a, a couple baby. of those that's fair and, and that's the problem is i mean it's like maybe i want to see what your content is but I hate to support the clickbaity title things, and it's like, uh, uh, yeah. well, it's like it's like clickbaity titles, but like if your content is also I don't enjoy it, that's when I block you. I, yeah. I there's some passes, there's a few people out there I do watch, like they get clickbaity titles, but they're actually very positive. Yeah, yeah, no, and absolutely. And like I, for me, that's well, the, they have to play the algorithm if they playing, want the clicks and they want the right. subscribers. If you're, if you're playing the hustle, I'm gonna give you the pass. But if you're clickbaity and negative in the in the title and everything, and I go in and your video is negative, not for me. You do you. I'm just gonna remove you from my ability to see you and just carry on about my day. But like, we don't need to get into that. It's, that's not what this is. This is yeah. a fireside chat. It's calm. I'm, that's, almost, that's right. that's I'm gonna finish my last little sip of beer calm. here as we wrap up the show. Hmm. Delicious, delicious. Today I'm drinking Rusty Rail Brewing. Ooh. I think it's a local. So, but it's a good. It's good. It's a nice little new. I would have known if I would have known this was beer time. I would have. Yeah. Next uh, time we do fireside chat, absolutely. I'll actually, we're in a tavern. As, as far as the, uh, we should name our tavern, yeah. that's what we should do. But yeah, we should. We'll do. We'll do beer each time. We'll make it a fireside chat proper. I, like the should, gilded elf or something. <laughs> we should get dwarf mug. I'm, I'm gonna look for dwarf mugs and maybe send you one. Like that's. We'll I just drink out of that the whole time. I love then, it. I, then love I, gotta, it. I gotta keep the beard then. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Like I said, everybody that's watched so far, please like and subscribe. Share this with people. I hope you enjoy these. I really enjoy doing these because it's different from the general show, which can kind of go where... It's been Old World a lot in that show, so it could go anywhere at once. But John and I were going to do Old World chat pretty much all the time. We might do Sigmar here and there because we also love Sigmar. Um, you can keep that filthy... For no, I'm kidding. 40K is fine. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a game I play too often, but this is going to be a fantasy style chat so um john we don't know next time we'll do this we'll do it when we feel like it when we have something we want Absolutely. to say so what, what message would you like to leave everybody with today my message is if you decide to get into old world dive in and find something passionate to do find some history find some lore find some art style just that's one of the best parts about this game is just get in and find something that that makes you smile when you do it you're going to win games, you're going to lose games, but have fun and all that in-between time. That's that's what I'm aiming for, so I hope everybody else does too. Can't say it better myself. We'll leave it at that. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye.